I want to make another photo with you all. But first, we got to find a hole. So those of you who have been following this channel carefully over the last month know I've relocated to Seattle. It's been a lot of fun to find and follow different Instagrammers that shoot here in Seattle. There are so many fantastic views of the city. You can see some of them in that uh, recent video of mine, Your Photos Suck. Um, there's one place I didn't shoot from in that, well, there's a lot of places I didn't shoot from in that video, but one of them I've had my eye on to shoot from for a while and it's this view just south of the city, let's say southeast. And there's a hole in a chain link fence that kind of lines up really nicely with the downtown high rises. I saw this shot on uh, Tim Erpman's Instagram. I'll link it right down below. I'm pretty sure Tim isn't the first to take the picture of it. Uh, and that brings up the question of how do you all feel about making photos that are very similar to other photos you've already seen. Or, let's take it a step further and say of famous landmarks. If you've gone to Paris, would you photograph the Eiffel Tower? A lot of people have photographed it. I'd love to see your comments about that down below. I will not share my opinion about it right now, but I think you probably can be able to discern it based on the fact that I'm about to show you, me, making this photo here where I know other people have done very similar shots. Let's find this hole, it's right over here. So here's what we're basically looking at. We've got the Seattle skyline, and we've got the I-5, Interstate 5, that kind of swoops right on in to that location. And right below us, we have the I-90 interchange. It's I-90 is the interstate that runs all the way across the country to Boston. So you can get on here and basically go straight for, what is it, 2,800 and so miles and end up in Boston a few days later. I suggest a detour to Route 2, which takes you just a little bit further north to some fantastic country, including, of course, Glacier. But let's get back to task at hand. So I've got the Sony set up here with a 24 to 70 lens. Gives me some flexibility in how I shoot. I'm gonna to wanna to include a little bit of this chain link fence to act as a frame. Then I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that I'm using these leading lines of the interstate to kind of guide our viewer's eye up to the image. But we can strengthen those leading lines even a little bit more by doing a long exposure. So instead of all these little pinpoints of light that are the cars, they're all gonna to turn to long streaks probably going to end up somewhere around 15, 20 seconds or so to uh, really get those to be nice and long and not kind of distracting with these short little stuttery lengths of light. I'm set up a little bit earlier than I want to to actually take the picture. There's still a good amount of light and that's all right because it gives me a little bit of time. Please, whenever you're going someplace and you want to make a nice photo, do not cut it close and rush yourself. You're, you're bound to screw something up or to forget something. And this just gives you a little bit of time, a little bit of practice session to make sure everything is going the way you want it to, and then you can make your actual photos. 15 extra minutes, 20 extra minutes, sometimes an hour, depending on what you're shooting, where you're shooting. That can really make the difference, that preparation between an okay, rushed looking photo and something that turns out to be really fantastic. I'm imagining this to go onto Instagram, so I'm not worried too much. I'm looking for that kind of squarish crop. So I've got a lot of extra over on the right hand side, right over in this area, and I'm not so concerned about that. What I am concerned about though, is using this frame in such a way that it really lines up nicely with the city and that I'm not intersecting any of the pieces of the city that I want to capture. For instance, that building right there is hitting the edge of the frame, so I need to shift a little bit. But what I'll be watching for as I shift is to make sure that this curve of the road here isn't ending up too far to the right. So let's go ahead and line this up a little bit better. Right around here looks pretty good. So now I'm shooting for video 160 to the second f2.8. 
But when I switch over to photos, what I'm really looking for here is getting that long exposure. 15 seconds is probably gonna be a sweet spot. I'm gonna really kind of let that determine my aperture. I don't really wanna go much higher than F16. I want this fence to act as a framing device. How many times have I said that already? But I want it to be a slightly out of focus framing device. I don't feel like it needs to be crisp. If it's crisp, then we're gonna to start to get some distraction, I think. So with my focus out there on the city, F14, F11, I think somewhere in that neighborhood is going to be fine. One of the other things I can do with the Sony is I can drop my ISO down artificially down to 50. So right now, 15 seconds, F11, ISO 50, I'm showing as a just one third of a stop overexposed. So let's come back up to F14. We're showing an even exposure. I'm gonna adjust a little bit more because I'm feeling like it isn't exactly straight right now. I'm gonna zoom in, I'm manually focusing. I'm gonna zoom in, double check my focus now that these shots are gonna to start to count. Focus peaking helps, but autofocus here would be fine. There's tons of contrast and light out there. Let's see what we get. Actually, I just made a mistake. Should be in self-timer mode or be using the remote. Um, so once this shot is done, I'm gonna put it uh, on two second timer. It's the poor man's remote. That way there's no vibrations happening at the moment of the picture. I'm gonna take a second. I'm gonna zoom in on this picture that I just took. And now I'm just kind of scrolling around. Am I lined up rightly? Does it look as sharp as possible? Am I missing anything? So I'm just zooming around, looking, making sure intersections are where they think they should be. And I notice when I zoom in on that, that we still have some breaks in the clouds up there. It's quite bright in areas and those are a little bit blown out. So now it just kind of becomes a waiting game. I'm just gonna wait for this light levels to drop a little bit more. I might try a couple exposures a little bit longer than 15 seconds, but I have to say at F14, the fence is pretty crisp. So I'm gonna wait a little bit longer and see if I can get that aperture down just a little bit lower, or I should say wider of an aperture to get this fence to be slightly out of focus. Let's uh, head back and uh, post-process some pictures. My goal was to get that wider aperture and to get there, I need to let the light levels drop and it took about 30 minutes for that to happen. So the first shot we see is one of the test shots that I threw up um, as an example, straight out of the camera. And you know, I'm pretty happy with this uh, at 14, 15 seconds, but it wasn't until about a half an hour later, as I said, that the light levels dropped enough that um, I got more of the image that I was thinking and looking about. But I'll tell you, this is an interesting lesson in depth of field. We have to go all the way to F3.2 before this fence really starts to get kind of the softness that I imagined. I did not think we would have to go that wide. My focus point was out here on the far city. Um, and it's just a, a lesson of how deep your depth of field can be with a wider focal length, 24 millimeters on a full frame camera, uh, that, that causes everything even, let's go back a little bit here, F5.6. The fence is not perfectly in focus, but it certainly is pretty close to it. All right, but let's work on this image here. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. Um, I think it, I'm pretty happy with how it looks straight out of the camera. The first thing I'm going to do is crop it down to the look I'm going for. I mentioned that I was going to be probably sharing this on Instagram. I mean, I will, uh, both as a promotion for this video you're watching right now. Um, and also just because I think it's a pretty cool picture. So I'm going to line up my square somewhere around here. Uh, just because it's going on Instagram, of course I could go wider now. That's old school one-to-one. -one. But it still works really nicely in the thumbnails. It still looks good. Um, and in my case, it helps get rid of this big black fence post that's here, plus this bright light over here. So the one-to-one -one really works well. I'm actually going to drag it in a little bit. I've got my overlay on that tells me after cropping what size I'm working on. So, you know, with these Sony files, this is a 42 megapixel sensor, it gives me a lot of room to crop if it's just going to Instagram. And, you know, I typically don't like to do that. I like to have it come out of the camera pretty close to what I'm going to be um, finally finalizing it at, but still, it's nice. You can change these settings under your view 
view options uh, and there's different show or sorry so the info overlay and you can edit those and all of that all right now let me make sure this is completely straight it feels a little crooked and not using the fence post but using the buildings in the distance that's what I want to make sure is nice and straight so I'm using those kind of secondary lines to just kind of watch and make sure that they're lined up right alongside the buildings and I think that to me seems to be uh, better if there was issues with this where I really needed the foreground and the background all to be lined up very nicely, the guided transform tool. And I've got a free video online that shows more about that, but this looks pretty good to me. Um, usually, well, let me just apply my base preset. All that does is clarity and vibrance. That usually gets applied on import, but I've reset this image as I was playing around with it earlier. Now I want to uh, just drop my exposure a little bit. I'm going to work my way down through this basic panel. And my goal here is to kind of spread this histogram out and get it to go from point to point when I do that. It's pretty close to it already and I might need to back it off the whites actually. Your goal is to spread it from point to point without having it run up the sides. That's clipping and loss of information. So a little more contrast in there. All right, highlights. So you can see, let's hit the J key. That gives us our overlay, or shows us areas that are completely blown out, lost, information lost, or in the case of the blue, the red, the case of the blue shows us the darker areas uh, that all information has been lost. So with that on, my goal should be to kind of back this off and get rid of as much of that red as possible. Honestly, I'm not too concerned about going all the way until all red is gone here because really these are just bright lights off in the distance. They're going to be a little bright and there's no real information in them. So it's okay in this area as well too. My shadows, I think my shadows are fine. Maybe I'll bring them down a little bit more to add just a little bit of crunch, a little more contrast is what I mean when I say that. And I'll raise my blacks as well. I really kind of want this to have that futuristic city, very sharp, very detailed, uh, very contrasty. So that's my goal here. Um, but pretty minor, those pretty minor changes, and, and overall, I'm fairly happy with that. The one other thing that's bothering me, though, is the white balance. It's so warm in here from the cast of different colored street lamps. Uh, it's a little cooler up here, and then, of course, the blue sky makes it feel very cool. You know, one downside of waiting a half an hour is a lot of the clouds left, so I'm a little bummed about that, but overall, still pretty nice. So I'm going to come back up to my white balance, and I'm going to just start to lowering it. I think somewhere in here, I like that. Feels uh, more even across the image now. Feels cooler, more crisp. You know, if I felt like it was still too cool up here, I could get my uh, gray, radial gradient tool dragging up and using, or not dehaze, and kind of bluing up, lowering or cooling the temperature down below as well. So that would help of match the bottom with the top. Pretty subtle. I don't want too strong. I think that looks pretty good. One of the other things that I mentioned that I wanted to do was really kind of de-emphasize the fence. I've got two quick tricks for that. I'm going to get my radial gradient tool. I'm going to drag it, make a big circle here in the middle that kind of matches up with the fence hole. I'm going to say show selected mask overlay just for a minute so you can see that right now by default it's outside the gradient that is affected by anything I change. And the easy way to see that is let's just do something drastic like drop our contrast. Um, but we don't want it outside, we want it inside. So I'm going to invert that mask. I'm going to uh, double click exposure to center at back where I want it to be. And I'm going to bump up the clarity. Uh, not too much, but really just kind of increase that contrast in there. I'm going to hit the J key. I want that stuff off. So let's turn this off for a second. And see. So the city's got this kind of glow to it. It's a little too much. And we also have dehaze. Keep getting turned back on. Oops. Yeah, making sure. Okay, so turn that down just a little bit. Now, a second circle, gradient, new, drag. It's going to be right where the first is. This one, though, I'm going to drag in a little bit more. This one's going to be used to de-emphasize the fence, so I'm going to drop the clarity. And now that is working as default outside the gradient. So now we've kind of softened this whole fence 
around that area and just kind of emphasize the city within. One of the great things about shooting on a tripod is the ability to then stack a couple of images. Now I'm going to save this for the members only section of PhotoRec TV, but I've got another shot here and I might want to layer these two shots. First I'll show you. I want these two shots to be identical in their editing. So I'm just going to copy from that one and paste onto this one. It's going to take all of those settings and it's going to be identical except for the light trails. So this road here in the foreground feels a little light as far as the light trails goes to me. And I could put bring both of these into Photoshop and stack them to get just a little bit more light trail action here, erasing the other areas. And that gives me just a little bit more to work with if I wanted. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this one single image. If you found this video helpful, give it a quick thumbs up. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you're not already a subscriber, take a moment to subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye.